हम राइट फ्रॉम वी डिड द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट नाउ वी विल नो वरीज वी विल गो थ्रू इट विल कम टू स्टाइल एज डेविएशन ठीक है स्टाइल एज डेविएशन की हम बात करते हैं इन द बिगनिंग जैसे वी हैव डिस्कस्ड डी फेमिलियराइजेशन एंड मेटाफोरिकल लैंग्वेज ऑन वेरियस लिटरी डिवाइस के जब हम मैटर ऑफ फैक्ट तरीके से इन मैटर ऑफ फैक्ट इन लिटरल वे हम कोई बात करते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन वी से पेन इज वेरी इफेक्टिव और पेन राइट्स वेल ठीक है ओके दैट इज ऑबियस इट्स अ फैक्ट इट इज समथिंग विच इज अ रियलिटी इन ट्रू उसमें तो कोई समझने की सच बहुत डिटेल बात नहीं है कि पेन इज इफेक्टिव लाइक इन द सेंस ऑफ राइटिंग इफ इट स्टैंड फॉर राइटिंग बट वेन वी से पेन इज अ सोल्ड और पेन इज लाइक अ सोल्ड कलम जो है वो तलवार है तो अब हम क्या करते हैं दैट इज स्लाइटली लिटरी लैंग्वेज लिटरी लैंग्वेज इस तरह से है कि दो डिफरेंट आइडियाज को डिसिमिलर ऑब्जेक्ट्स को वी हैव योग टूगेदर और इट टेक्स अस अ बिट ऑफ टाइम वन ऑफ द वन ऑफ द फॉर्मुलिस्ट सेड के लिटरी लैंग्वेज इज इज एस्थेटिकली डिलाइटफुल बट द प्लेजर वी डिराइव आउट ऑफ इट इट टेक्स लॉन्गर and the reader is kind of the reader gets immersed into the language into the meanings the various shades of meanings to agar hum sirf ye uh, this, this very very uh, brief kind of a simple sentence pen is like a sword to what we are doing is that we are using we are uh, making use of a different kind of a language sword is sharp and uh, with sword this thing can be done and that thing can be done these are very literal ways of saying things but when we say pen is a sword to uh, two dissimilar objects one the domain of battle and fight and killing and all and the other one where you are like learning and pursuing certain scholarship and you are writing expressing your ideas two domains two very conflicting and two very contradictory and contrasting domains are brought together two very dissimilar objects are brought together pen is 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 a sword theek hai acha jab hum aisa bhi nahi hota ki hum bahut aasani se acha kalam talwar kaise hain kalam talwar aise hain ki it can cut through people it can with it you can defend yourself with it you can um, you can hurt people you can arouse them out of their dormancy if they are like dull in their thought processes you can arouse you can stimulate them and you can transform you can turn things upside down with the help of a sword with the help of power and might and you can do it with a pen so we start when we listen to this metaphorical expression we start thinking in many directions okay one the whole domain of battlefield and fight and all and the other an altogether different domain and now we try to bring them together and we try to derive different meanings out of it ki acha it can cut through it can change the ideas of people it can change the practices of people it can transform societies it can kill people it can make them live again so um Uh, different directions may it takes us a bit longer to understand literary terms and literary devices and literary language but that aesthetically okay this is a very good expression it it not only pleases us in the deeper meanings of it but also in the general generally like uh, two different contrasting ideas brought together that is something refreshing which we don't find in the conversation in the literal matter of fact conversations that we conduct or carry out in everyday life and everything like the whole uh, idea of a pen it becomes a uh, defamiliarized sketch a pen can do this writing can do this it can accomplish this as well and it takes longer and by taking a longer time it kind of uh, elongates our aesthetic pleasure as well to uh, itna hi hai ki jo ek matter of fact baat hai aur jo ek literary baat hai which is like subtler in connotation and with a different use of language 
that has it takes us into many directions and is it aesthetically delights as well that is why it has a long lasting impact on us now style is deviation jaise abhi um, inhone kaha ki deviation ki zyada samajh nahi aayi deviation in a very in a very general sense aap le le ke kuch normal se kuch usual se from from the usual from the normal from the everyday uh practices you do something different you you don't follow the norm you don't follow the norm you don't follow the rule you don't follow the practice which is followed by a thousand people which is followed by everyone almost everyone around you and you go in a slightly different direction that is called deviating ab agar wahi baat hai ke um, like things are said spoken by people and in everyday life uh, everybody speaks the same way theek hai and they are speaking literally to hum pe un baaton ka zyada asar nahi hota lekin whenever language is used in a slightly different way away from the norm whether semantically mani aap kahi aur jod dete hain kisi aur context mein use kar lete hain kisi aur context ke sath kisi aur object ke sath associate kar lete hain ya syntactically aap devi deviate karte hain it is always very like it catches our attention it grabs our attention it sounds refreshing to our ears it looks refreshing to our eye sight to hum usme jaise hazar log hain unka ek hi hair style theek hai um aapke samne you have a you have a hundred boys aur unke short hair hai and you have a hundred girls and they have long hair so what's they are following the norm and there is nothing like striking or refreshing or new or anything very pleasing about it but you come across a girl who has a shaved head and you come across a boy who has like this back long hair and then you you are amused if nothing else i mean there could be you could be delighted in so many ways but even if you are slightly entertained and amused and it catches your attention ke hey, this is something different this is something from what men are used to doing and this is what some uh something which women are uh not used to doing ek hai to aapko wo aur then jab aapko appearance mein ek cheez strike kar jati hai na then you go into the details of it ke what could be the purpose of that lady going for a shaved head is it acceptable to the context what are the reactions of the various people and all the different connotations of it then aapko you go into the context you go into the mindset but the very first thing is that deviation in the form in the physical form in the physical appearance and which is there in the language language aapko mukhtalif lagti hai na to fir aap sochte hain jaise ki ye bhi mani ho sakte hain uske ye bhi ho sakte hain se maqsad kya tha aur you are refresh and you are aesthetically pleased as well so deviation deviation is only a technique it is only a part of uh, it is only a part of um having a style creating a style theek hai it is not all of the style is not like जरूरी नहीं है कि आप स्टाइल क्रिएट करें थ्रू डेविएशन बट इफ इन सर्टन थिंग्स सर्टन टेक्निक्स और लिंग्विस्टिक आइटम्स एंड लिंग्विस्टिक स्ट्रक्चर्स देर इज डेविएशन सो इट इज ऑलवेज रिफ्रेशिंग बट डेविएशन शुड ऑल्सो नॉट बी ओवर डन इफ यू डेविएट टू मच इट विल बिकम मोनोटनस हर चीज का ओवर डू करना जो है ना वो उसकी इट किल द वेरी नॉवल्टी एंड द वेरी स्पिरिट ऑफ इट सो दिस इज वॉट इज मेंट बाई डेविएशन example uh, which is given here and we are going to discuss other examples like we did one from everyday life so it will uh, clarify the whole thing to, to you the phrase a grief ago from a poem by dylan thomas is a good example generally we use a noun indicating time in the expression a uh, dash ago hum keh sakte hain a minute ago a second ago a day ago a month ago a year ago a decade ago theek hai hamare paas jo time ki measurements hain the sun साल फिफ्टी ईयर्स अगो लेकिन आ नहीं होगा फिर फिफ्टी ईयर्स अगो होगा बट सम मेजरमेंट्स इन टाइम क्योंकि हम पहले इतना वक्त पहले हम इस तरह का एक्सप्रेशन यूज करते हैं एंड वी फिल दिस स्लॉट दिस गैप इन दिस फ्रेज विद अ मेजरमेंट ऑफ टाइम अकाउंटेबल नाउ एंड द वर्ड टू फिल द स्लॉट इज नॉर्मली अकाउंटेबल नाउ ये ये अगर आपसे कोई कहे ना कि आई सो हेम अ मंथ बैक और आई मेट हेम आई केम अक्रॉस हेम अ डे बैक और अ वीक अर्लियर और अ वीक बैक तो आपको बात की 
literal everyday life mein this will be communicated and this will be a literal a literal expression to usme meaning ki confusion nahi hogi because these expressions are used for the measurement of time in relation to time lekin dillon thomas kya karta hai he says grief grief does not meet the con- ab grief ke ke bare mein kya aisa mukhtalif hai when you hear a grief ago a smile ago a love ago um और भी बहुत सारे डेथ अगो इट कुड बी एनी थिंग सो डिफरेंट सेंस मैन नॉट समथिंग विच मेजर्स टाइम विच इज अ मेजरमेंट ऑफ टाइम नॉट अ नाउन काउंटेबल और अनकाउंटेबल नॉट अ नाउन विच इज यूज फॉर टाइम विच रिलेट्स टू टाइम कुछ और एक मुस्कुराहट पहले एक मौत पहले एक जिंदगी पहले एक गम पहले एक दुख पहले तो Uh, this this becomes defamiliarized ab ye thoda sa unfamiliar defamiliar expression ho jata hai and that is why we our attention is grabbed by it you can we find it to be striking in this phrase grief does not meet the conventional requirement time ki measurement nahi hai dukh ya gham jo hai jo aapki gloominess hai your uh, grief it is not a measurement of time it is something different it's a feeling emotion However, as it occurs in a poem where a novel, a new, a brand new expression, a different, a defamiliarized expression is allowed, it is acceptable. Up, uh, one of the students asked me, "Hey, can we use this kind of language in everyday life?" And I said, "Okay." Now, just go to the rector's office and say, "Hey, a grief ago, I'll, um, I had done this." No, <laughs> in real life situation, you use literal language. that is a very direct and literal in matter of fact and realistic kind of communication But only within and since we are discussing the style of a literary work so within literature you have the slight sense to use language in a different way you can experiment you can innovate you can be ambiguous you can choose to be ambiguous you can choose to be symbolic like in not in everyday life this is not pragmatic pragmatics may ye nahi hai uh that is why people are attracted to literature they are not attracted to everyday language but when you give the same idea in poetry they will listen to you when you tell this the same lesson which you want to convey directly if you convey it implicitly through a short story i think they will be more attracted and they will be delighted by it aesthetically delighted by it as well so where a novel expression is allowed it is acceptable besides it expresses an idea in a beautifully succinct way in a very terse in a very pithy in a very brief brevity is the soul of that i had said it earlier ke ek bada hi grief ago ek naya idea hai ke ek gham se pehle theek hai aur phir aap usko bahut mukhtasar andaaz mein badi jaame andaaz mein lekin mukhtasar andaaz mein batate hain to it has its desired impact since grief means a feeling of great sadness and any feeling has to last for some time aisa nahi hota ke no feeling on earth this is good about things ke nothing lasts forever so whatever is good or bad is there it stays only for some time it is not difficult to figure out the message theek hai there was the, the poet is it इट इट विल टेक अस बिट ऑफ टाइम थोड़ा सा हमें वक्त लगेगा कि शायर जो है वो जिंदगी को मेजर कर रहा है जिंदगी की पैमाइश कर रहा है ग्रीफ्स के उसमें एंड दिस इज समथिंग विच हैज बिन रिकरिंग और आर ए करंट थिंग इन हिज लाइफ ठीक है एंड दे आर अ पार्ट ऑफ पार्ट ऑफ एवरीबडीज लाइफ देर इज वन ग्रीफ एंड देन वी मूव ऑन टू अनदर सेलिब्रेशन another ecstasy and then another grief another agony and ecstasy these are the rise and fall of life and everybody is familiar with them so uh, um measuring time in terms of love in terms of relationships in terms of people in terms of grief in terms of smiles in terms of tears a tear ago iska matlab hai ki shayar jo hai usko aadat hai ye cheez recurring hoti hai and then he looks at other things in their measurement in relation to them you can see his experience he may have experienced grief repeatedly so that he can measure time in terms of it uh and that the phrase a grief ago represents a special twist on the conventional expression a day ago or a minute ago ye ek thoda sa hat kar hai theek hai uh deviation is tarah se hai ki 
the perspective is very slightly different from the norm, from what is the at common, from what is common among people. Jo aam si baat hai ki lamhon se aur dinon se aur saalon se zindagi ko measure karna ya vakt ko measure karna. Lekin agar aap dukh se karte hain, aap mohabbat se karte hain. When this word, word related to feeling, emotion, idea, philosophy is brought here. Um, you can say an election ago, you can make it political, you can say a love ago, uh, you can make it romantic. So these will be slight variations and this will be called a deviation, a going away from the conventional use of language, from the terms which are used conventionally or traditionally or in a customary way for a certain thing. It will leave a deep impression on the reader. Because Rose Rose to koi ye istemal nahi karta. So ye achanak se ek refreshing lagega, ek nahi baat lagegi, and it is going to stay in the head of the reader. Such departure is doubtless delightful, okay? And it is a very sensitive, aesthetic way of looking at things. A different language used for it, a different idea, perspective on life. So it is definitely going to be eye eye opening, and it is going to be pleasing. But the view of style as deviation tends to be to undervalue all non deviant language. अगर आपने नुमाया होना है या आपने अटेंशन ग्रैब करनी है इसका ये मतलब नहीं है कि आप रिवायत तोड़ दें रिवायत तोड़ना इट कुड बी स्टाइल इट कुड अट्रैक्ट अटेंशन लेकिन यू कैन अट्रैक्ट अटेंशन यू कैन क्रिएट अ गुड स्टाइल विदाउट वॉयलेटिंग नॉर्म्स सो डेविएशन डिपार्टिंग फ्रॉम द कॉमन मीनिंग डिपार्टिंग फ्रॉम द कॉमन यूजेज ऑफ अ टर्म Departing from a common linguistic items, a, a group of items which can fill a slot. Uh, departing from going away from a syntactic pattern that is pleasing and that is refreshing. But one thing, it is only one way of making a good style of creating a good style. A good style can be it can be composed of repetition. It could be composed of. Uh, there are so many literary devices. There are so many techniques to to create a very attractive style to grab the attention of the reader. So deviation is only a part of style. There is only one technique to create an innovative style. It is not. ये नहीं है कि style का मतलब ये है कि हमेशा ही deviate करना है. It is just one aspect and one item. The the बिल्कुल uh, style. deviation is a part of creating a unique style individual style a different way of writing genre ke sath genres ke sath deviation hoti hai and i gave you this example of uh, of this novel the reluctant fundamentalist by masan hamid ki usme uh, uh, when i went for an interview th th there was a person sitting and i asked him what do you think of uh, is there any experiment is it a novel we don't call it a novel uh ye to novel ke genre mein nahi fall karta uh this is more of a prose dramatic monologue because one character is speaking usme throughout the novel one character is speaking and the other one is implicitly in the background but that character is not given a chance to speak so it is more appropriate to call it a dramatic monologue in prose Robert Browning has been writing it in uh, in poetry. So, ऐसा होता है कि ये different from the norm. Genre of novel जो है ठीक है आपने उसके साथ experimentation करी है. We brought plural narrative techniques, yeah, multiple endings in the postmodern uh, fiction and all. आ uh, ऐसे writers होते हैं जो deviate करते हैं literature के अंदर. You have the license to deviate from. even if it is grammatically incorrect you are as a literary only a literary writer is given the permission has the permission has the authority has the freedom to use grammatically incorrect sentences for for the creation of a different style for a certain stylistic purpose for a certain uh, literary purpose ye license jo hai ye baki logon ke paas nahi hota kyunki they are creating language they are creating a world out of their imagination they are being fictitious they are so they are artists and they are creative people jab wo ek duniya bana sakte hain out of their imagination through combination of the real and the imaginary so they are also permitted to 
and there are sometimes worlds are created out of nothing and they they don't have a resemblance to the real world to koi unko jhoota to nahi kehta ye nahi kehta ye kahan ki duniya hai ye to haqeeqat ki duniya nahi hai they are liars no they are creators they their works are artistic works they are creative works to ye create creativity is exercised not only in relation to creating characters and creating situations and creative Uh, creating a story out of them it applies to language as well so if you want to be creative with language you may violate the norms of language the grammatical principles of language you can violate to a certain extent until and unless it creates a certain ambiguity for the reader and you become too complex for the reader um, to understand you otherwise if you use it in in balance at certain points and it drives the point home and it highlights the point instead of making your writing very complicated or ununderstandable incomprehensible to phir to deviation is very refreshing um ho sakta hai writers can innovate they can experiment with genres they can ex- experiment with punctuation punctuation ke sath kar sakte hain Uh, uh i gave this example i read this poem uh, recently and this this was about a desire theek okay? hai uh, in first the poet uh use, uses the term elephant an elephant desire an enormous a huge desire overwhelming me and then in the other stanza he uses the word phantom for it like it is my Ill- illusion or it's like something which which is very evasive i cannot materialize it i cannot substantiate it so it eludes me i'm running after it i'm chasing it but it it doesn't materialize and then in the final one he uses a term he coins a new term elephantum this elephantum desire so ab ye dictionary mein kahi nahi hoga ye angrezi zuban mein kahi nahi hoga but he is combining when you read the poem you get the idea of this is what was meant by elephant this is what was meant by phantom and now he has coined a new word so maybe with the passage of time when others other writers use it it will become a part of the dictionary lekin wo lafz na angrezi zuban mein hai na dictionary mein hai na kisi aur ne use kiya hai aur usne achanak se do ajeeb se khayalat ko according to his subjective experience lekin for the rest of the common people it might not be as easy as we as students of literature find it so they have the license these literary writers have the license to to create new words to violate the structures and the rules of grammar they can be oh, deviant lekin no. deviant ka ye matlab nahi hai ki jo deviant hoga wohi acha writer hoga there are a thousand techniques of uh, creating a new style okay to make it to grab the attention of the, the audience mere mere khayal se if you there are like the victorian era was full of novels there were so many novelists and all um and i don't think it is very much in the language of charles dickens that you find aapka content be the way you look at things content be strong hona chahiye um uh there are uh, i must have given you the example of this um uh, a contemporary writer his name is julian barnes he is a british novelist ab wahi wo form uh, like novel likhta hai aur language bhi uski i don't think so ke koi aisi bahut zyada stylistic variation hai elephants hai but he adopts he he looks at the same event from let's say uh, i don't know whether i have told you or not but uh, this nova's ark no alay salam ki kashti ka jo waqia hai theek hai बनने का कि किस तरह से एंड हाउ द वेरियस पेयर्स ऑफ स्पीशीज दे वर बोर्डेड ऑन द शिप ऑन नोवाज आर्क एंड हाउ दे वर सेव एंड हाउ दे हैव कम टू हैव दिस प्रेजेंट डे एग्जिस्टेंस तो वही कहानी वो बताता है लेकिन ही इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ही टेल्स इट फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ अ टर्माइट एक टर्माइट जो है देर इज अनदर वर्ड यू यू जो दीमक होती है जो कीड़ा होता है लकड़ी को जो लगता है उसकी पर्सपेक्टिव से वो देखता है कि नोवा इज बिल्डिंग एन आर्क हिस सन्स आर हेल्पिंग हिम और नॉट व्हाट अबाउट द अदर पीपल वर बी द चोजन वंस वी वी वर नॉट द द टर्माइट सेज के वी वर स्टैंडिंग ऑन अ साइट एंड वी वर लुकिंग एट दैट दिस पेयर ऑफ एनिमल 
um, animals, they were boarded on ship and the rest, and they were about to close down the board, um, the ship. When we we knew that we were not the chosen ones, we were not to be boarded on the ship. So what did we do in order to make to ensure our survival? Hum, we went to the to the hair to the wool of a sheep. We got into it and stealthily we got on Noah's ark. And then the rest of the situation again is described. The whole of it is described through. So um, the point is the point is not this. It is a very refreshing story. Like you read it in Bible, you read it in Quran, you read it in. Like you have references to it in movies and books, Noah's Ark, and there was a great flood. This incident is almost there in every uh, religious scripture and uh, even in novels and all. But the way he has described it from the perspective of a minor, minor, negligible insect, that is very refreshing. Now, he language techniques that he a person is telling you a story, a termite is telling you a story. But the content is very, uh, the perspective is different, so the content changes. Some people will tell you, now we see that you are saying that you are attention grab. One is that your perspective is different or your content is different. That since in stylistics we are more concerned with the form, with the appearance of language, so I can give you this example that we have recorded human history, which is the history of human history. There is a lot of love, almost every song has a love. Political, some, some part of it on social issues. But still we, are, we listen to poetry, we read poetry, because everybody writes about it. That is a theme. So you say that this song has also been talking about love, and that song has also been talking about love for 500 years ago, and now in the 20th century. Still people are writing about love. Your dramas are based on love themes. Your fiction is based on love themes. Your poetry, your songs, everything literary. At the center of it is the theme of love. And it is the most cliched of all the themes. But still, when a poet is reciting poetry, a new poet arises on the horizon, we listen to him. Because we know that the language, that his perspective, his experience will be individual. But along with that, we, we know, we know for sure that the expression he is going to use for that experience is going to be different. So we don't say that the traditional content is not going to be Even then, you can say things about it in your own way, the way you perceive it. So style is different, language is different, and that is what attracts us as well. So sometimes language is cliched, the content is different. Sometimes, like in poetry, the content is cliched, but the style, the language is different. And that is why we take interest. So there is no different thing. The difference means that in a literary way, using a different literary device, which has not been hitherto used by any other writer. And that is how they can attract attention, because they can only play with language. They can play with ideas, with the content, but the play with language, the experimentation with language is at the center of it. Uh, so this is it. Deviation ki bare mein itna zehen mein rakhe, ke nahi hai ke for, for grabbing your attention, for getting readership, you deviate from each and every kind of norm. Or you do something which is outrageous. That you do something such a bad thing that people will understand it, but it will not be aesthetically pleasing. So deviation can be when it is done with sensibility, with a certain aesthetic standard. It is refreshing, and it is definitely used as a as a technique, as a device for uh, for creating a style. Okay. Now we come to style as choice. Style is your choice. Bhi hai. Uh, ye, ye debatable hai. It's a very broad thing. Ke, uh, within, within certain, within the language system, within the genre, you can you can exercise certain variations. Lekin itna bhi nahi ke you jump from uh, like it should not offend the sensibilities of the readership. उसके अंदर ही आप एक जैसे हम कहते हैं ना अभी हमने बात की कि कोई अपना बिल्कुल ज़लेदी और गर्ल हु शेड्स हर है तो वो इफ इट इस वेरी शॉकिंग तो मेबी समटाइम्स इट इस एक्सेप्टेबल एट अदर टाइम्स इट इस नॉट 
वो वेरिएशन आप करें लेकिन समथिंग विच इज नॉट आउटरेज इज टू आउटरेज इज और टू डिसप्लीजिंग टू ऑफेंसिव टू द कॉन्टेक्स सो दैट रीडर्स कैन लाइक ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द राइटर but style within literature you have a lot of room you have a lot of license and you can exercise it with language particularly this view implies the concept of style as variation aap usme tabdili leke aaye na slight variations and experimentations so you can choose the kind of language with which you are writing language is your stuff and you can choose it for writing you get the kind of language you want to even if you are grammatically incorrect or you want to turn upside down the syntax of a sentence or a different kind of a terminology you can use it you have this literary license this view implies the concept of style as variation you okay? can you are an individual you as a literary writer will go for one kind of expression i will go for another kind of expression because in my mind the image is different in your mind the image is different you go for one lexical choice i go for another lexical choice but it has to be defamiliarized it has to be uh, non literal and it has to be refreshing something which grabs the attention if it is too familiar familiarity breeds contempt so nobody is going to pay attention aapko mehnat karni hogi on all these literary devices and these various techniques for the for the creation for the development of a certain style that is style consists of saying the same thing in different ways jaise humne kaha ke one theme is their love but saying the same thing saying things on the same topic on the same theme in different ways that is why poetry is still the most popular genre of literature do it could be about love it could be agar aap bahut zyada themes dekh le to they will be this poetry the whole body of poetry whatever the language is it will be the world poetry will be limited to four or five subjects four or five subjects but saying the same thing about politics about religion about social issues about culture about private and personal experience but they are these things these genres this genre is liked by is popular among masses because things are said in different ways ek hi shayar apne kaam mein sometimes he is for a love experience he is full of ecstasy and the words are like brimming with with celebration and with uh, with joy and another times at another point of time he is completely suicidal and he is very down and the diction and everything denotes the structure of sentences everything denotes that mood so different way mein baat karna on the same subject on the same experience Here are five sentences roughly conveying the same message. वही बात है मुख्तलिफ तरीके से कही ही गई है आप इसको जरा गौर से पढ़ें कि क्या मुख्तलिफ है इसमें पांच जुमले हैं अब आप किसी भी गोड हो पब्लिक प्लेस एंड दीज फाइव सेंटेंसेज कुड भी और दिस वन मैसेज कुड भी रिटर्न इन फाइव वेज पांच तरीके हैं स्मोकर्स आर रिक्वेस्टेड टू ऑक्यूपाई रेयर सीट्स ठीक है ये पाकिस्तान में तो नहीं होगा क्योंकि इनको रियर सीट्स का मीनिंग समझाना बड़ा मुश्किल होगा फॉर फॉर द कॉमन पीपल स्मोकर्स प्लीज सेट एट द बैक इफ यू स्मोक सेट एट द बैक स्मोकर्स मस्ट सेट एट द बैक एंड स्मोकर्स एट द बैक सिंस देयर आर वी आर कमिंग बैक टू इट सिंस देयर आर डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ सेइंग द सेम थिंग वन मैसेज दोस हु स्मोक शुड और दे आर टू सेट एट द बैक ऑफ द ऑफ द प्लेस the key to language use is to make the best choice the best choice according to your objective your personal preference to your context the context of the whole of the text this a speaker or writer consistently chooses certain words or structures over others available in the language system pehle to mujhe ye bataye ki in mein se one of you ke kaun sa aapko behtar lagta hai uh this is like uh, an educated formal polite courteous way of saying it to people smokers are requested to occupy to occupy ke wo barajman ho jaye wo to shreef rakhe rear seats pe back seats pe rear is a word which is like it's a kind of a bit scholarly word to hamara bada formal and polite it becomes very formal and very polite अब कंट्रास्ट में देख लें उसी बात को स्मोकर्स प्लीज सेट एट द बैक बात तो वही है कहने का अंदाज मुख्तलिफ है 
but it is quite simple i think like everybody can it's a bit breathe. informal please hum informal maybe please were you smokers please sit at the back they can brief simple and slightly informal slightly informal compared to the first one now the third one if you smoke you can sit at the back is isme kya tinge hai what kind of a tinge do you find in it थिंग बैड विच यू डू and all of you must be a bad person so you sit at the back and then because you are a bad person i have the authority to direct you so ye mere khayal se um, this will be a bit offensive smokers must sit at the back ab language to iski simple hai wo pichli wali jo third one hai the language is simple not very scholarly or educated or very formal there is no formal rigidity about it smokers must like it's a rule it's a principle if you violate it you are going to be punished it's very dictatorial must sit at the back there is no other option with you and smokers at the back ka matlab hai ki bas theek hai ek baat karni hai very abruptly very briefly uh, no verb is used isme verb bhi nahi hai baat ko khatam karne ki koshish ki gayi hai there is no like very abruptly a message is conveyed that this is what you are to do to wo jo verb ka missing uh, miss hona hai smokers should or sit at the back please so there is no request there is no nothing of the polite sort just a brief abrupt way of sending across the message ab aapko if you are like uh, some people would be using this kind of an expression some be most of the people in in uh, particularly developed countries they would go for the first expression hamare ha third wala expression zyada kaam karega or agar particularly you are going to to places which belong to to these higher institutions i i hope you know the higher institutions in our country smokers must sit at the back is tarah ke dictatorial kind of messages honge not polite but dictatorial so these are for conveying the same thing whether you write love poetry or you convey a simple message for conveying one idea you have a thousand ways to speak it to write it and it depends on your choice so it's not an easy task you have a whole language system of you have these common items the, the word smoking or smoke is there back is there sit is there wahi aapke paas lexical choices hain wahi language system ke andar jo vocabulary available hain wo aap use karenge but the way you kind of organize them the way you add certain items to them linguistic for politeness for um for requests and then for commands wo bahut difference they make a lot of difference to the kind of expressions that you are using for conveying the same message the view that style is choice is a broader view theek okay? hai we are still delimited by the by the language system we are delimited by the social context we are delimited by uh, the level of education of the audience uh ye sari cheeze bahut zyada ya our own scholarship as well delimits us so it may in some way subsume the view of style as deviance deviance can be taken as a part of style yahan pe to variation hai it's not style as choice ka matlab hai you have varieties of uses of language and it depends on you if you use it one way it will ab ye uh, suppose koi author nahi hai aapko waise hi kaha gaya hai ki aap isme se ye panch cards bane hue hain and whatever you want to display to ek hi bande ne ho sakta hai ye panch baatein likhi ho and you take one of them so the language the way the kind language is used that will have its own connotations its own ambiance its own impression and you can choose out of them similarly you have a lot of linguistic expressions and items and when you choose one of them you go for a certain kind of a style you go for a certain kind of stylistic impact but still you are delimited by the linguistic choices available to you and again this is a repetition of the the style ke deviance is only one part one technique of 
which you can apply for uh, creating a style in literature. So I hope Ma'am. style is G G style is deviation and style is as a choice as variation is clear to you. It, you you take the example of uh, of a verse by Ghalib on, on on love. You take the example of a verse from Faz on love, by Yeats on love, by T. S. Eliot on love, by Coleridge on love, and it will be different. It will be on love theme, but it will be different. The expression will be different. Yes. So. Um, uh, this is what is about style. They will be using a different kind of uh, of a language for for the same idea, for the same subject, for the same experience. Style unka different The way you the way you use the kind of language that you select for giving expression to your thoughts on a subject will determine your style. Aapki alfaz, aapka style to a large extent determine karenge, the way you speak about them, the way you write about them, though the theme could be the same one. Like we said about love and politics and religion. Aapka jo andaze baya hai, wo aapka, um, aapka style banayega aur aapke style ko mukhtalif karega, distinguish karega, distinct banayega from other writers. Thik hai? Aur jaise hum uh, ek shayar ne ye bhi kaha hai ki, वही इस पे सिमिलैरिटी पे बात है कि इट कुड बी ऑन द सेम सब्जेक्ट कि सदाएं एक सी सदाएं एक सी एक सानियत में डूब जाती हैं जरा सा مختلف जिसने पुकारा याद रहता है तो एक तरह की हम एक तरह की आवाजें एक तरह की बातें एक तरह के अल्फाज जो है ना वो हमें वी डोंट वी स्टॉप लिसनिंग टू देम एक ही बात ठीक है एंड व्हेन समबडी कॉल्स सेज द सेम थिंग इन अ डिफरेंट वे इन अ डिफरेंट language even like you can say that the emotion is different of but if how how are we going to see the emotion when the emotion is expressed in language to mukhtalif pukarna in a different kind of a language when somebody calls you or makes a different use of language the reader's attention is is grabbed now we come to foregrounding uh, foregrounding se pehle main aapko bata dun ke ye jo अगर आप जहन में रखें ना यू एसोसिएटेड विद विद आर्ट ऑफ पेंटिंग एंड द आर्ट ऑफ फोटोग्राफी जब आप जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल व्हेन आपका ये व्हेन यू यू गॉट टू बी 18 इयर्स ओल्ड और आपका आईडी कार्ड बन रहा था एनआईसी नेशनल आइडेंटिटी कार्ड एंड यू वेंट टू अ फोटोग्राफर कि मुझे इस साइज का द साइज व्हिच इज फिट और अप्रोप्रिएट फॉर द फॉर द एनआईसी कार्ड तो मुझे इस तरह की टेक अ फोटो ऑफ मी टेक अ पिक ऑफ मी फॉर दिस पर्पस so wo aap say when he's taking the pic and later on when he is kind of developing it he asks you what kind of a background should i give it a white background or should it i should i give it a blue background or or a gray background slightly gray background to wo aap se poochta hai ki isko background kya do theek hai that is a normal question we come across wo aap se ye kyu nahi poochta कि जो इसका पस मंजर है जो इसके पीछे क्या होगा उसके बारे में आपसे पूछता है आपसे ये नहीं पूछता कि इसको फोरग्राउंड क्या करूं इसके फोर का मतलब है ब्रिंगिंग टू द फोर दिस इज एन एक्सप्रेशन ब्रिंगिंग टू द फोर सामने लेके आना टू ब्रिंग इट टू द सेंटर टू ब्रिंग इट टू द फोकस ऑफ अटेंशन टू मेक इट प्रोमिनेंट किसी चीज को नुमाया करना किसी चीज को मरकज में लाना किसी चीज को सामने लाना किसी चीज को ऐसे तरीके से प्रेजेंट करना कि जो देखने वाला है पहले उसकी नजर जम जाए हिज साइट इज कॉट बाय हिज आई इज कॉट बाय द वेरी थिंग व्हिच इज फोरग्राउंड तो आपसे वो बैकग्राउंड का पूछता है फोरग्राउंड का नहीं पूछता व्हाई द मेन फोकस इज यू ही नोस दैट यू आर टेकिंग योर ओन फोटोग्राफ तो उस फोटोग्राफ में जो जो मरकज में होगा एक तो ये है कि आप बिल्कुल सेंटर में ले आए वन थिंग ऑफ वन वे ऑफ डूइंग इज दैट पेंटिंग में या फोटोग्राफी में यू ब्रिंग इट टू द सेंटर एंड वट एवर इज देयर एज ऑन द साइड लाइन्स एट द बैक ऑफ इट जैसे वेन यू गो टू अ थिएटर फॉर अ स्टेज प्ले और समथिंग टू वॉच अ प्ले तो देर इज अ बैकग्राउंड देर आर चेयर एंड देर इज आर सोफाज एंड देर आर गर्डन एंड देर इज देर आर सो मेनी लाइक थिंग्स बट इन द फोरग्राउंड आर द एक्टर्स आर फोरग्राउंडेड जो कैमरा होता है ना वो उनकी तरफ जूम करता है 
कि उनको सामने लाया जाए बाकी बैकग्राउंड में अगर कोई दे कुड बी इन अ गार्डन दे कुड बी इन अस्लम दे कुड बी इन अ ड्राॅइंग रूम वो बैकग्राउंड होता है वो अगर गरीब है तो स्लम में होंगे एक झोंपड़ी का पस मंजर होगा उसको हम पस मंजर कहते हैं बैकग्राउंड कहते हैं बिकॉज द थिंग अच्छा दिस इज नॉट द ओनली वे टू ब्रिंग इट टू द सेंटर समटाइम्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ पेंटर इज पेंटिंग तो राइट नाउ इफ अ पर्सन गोज आउट एंड द पर्सन इज इन अ गार्डन तो वो उसमें जो प्लांट्स वगैरह हैं वो सारे और फ्लावर्स हैं वो सबको प्रजेंट करेगा और मे बी एट अ साइड समथिंग कैच इज योर अटेंशन बिकॉज ऑफ द टेक्स्चर बिकॉज ऑफ द डिफरेंस बिकॉज ऑफ द बिकॉज ऑफ द कलर बिकॉज ऑफ द पोजिशनिंग कि मे बी द गार्डन मोस्ट ऑफ द गार्डन लुक्स ग्रीन एंड देर आर अ वेराइटी ऑफ फ्लावर्स इन इन लाइट इन इन रेड एंड पिंक एंड सच और मे बी रेड फ्लावर्स और पिंक फ्लावर्स एंड देर इज अ येलो बड़ा फ्लाई फ्लाइंग इन दे and that catches your attention who be not because of because uh, the rest of the objects are inanimate and there is one living creature flying and that is painted in yellow not only because of the because of the difference with the rest of the of the structure of the background ek cheez hum aapki foreign se jab aap tasveer ko dekhte hain to your eye will be caught by the by the yellow soft uh, flying moving image of a butterfly so there could be various ways of foreground from foregrounding things kabhi markaz mein le aana kabhi is tarah se karna ki color contrast mein ho the rest of it is in one color and one thing is in a different color kabhi like an animate and um uh, uh, like a living creature to so this in this kind of a background one thing is foregrounded one thing comes into prominence ठीक है और उसी पे आपका कैमरा जो है जो आपका लेंस है वो फोकस करता है उस वो पूरी पेंटिंग में वो चीज़ नुमाया नजर आती है अब जो राइटर है उसके पास अगर वो सपोज द राइटर नॉवलिस्ट इज राइटिंग अ नॉवल अ पोइम पोइट इज राइटिंग अ पोइम उसके पास तो ना कलर्स हैं ना टेक्सचर है ना साइज है फोरग्राउंडिंग की एक आप खुद भी फोरग्राउंडिंग करते हैं पहले तो बिफोर टेक ब्रिंगिंग यू टू अटेक्स अब जब अपनी सपोज आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू एन असाइनमेंट एंड यू आर गोइंग टू गिव इट टू मी तो क्या आपका पूरा जो डॉक्यूमेंट है वो रोमन टाइम्स न्यू रोमन में ट्वेल्व फॉर्म साइज में होगा पूरा डॉक्यूमेंट द होल ऑफ द डॉक्यूमेंट इज गोइंग टू बी इन दिस साइज एंड ऑल सिमिलर यूनिफॉर्म उसमें आपका आपके पास अपनी कोई असाइनमेंट देख लें और उसको ग्रेफोलॉजी कहते हैं ग्रेफोलॉजिकल लेवल है कि जो नजर आ रहा है ना जो नजर को नजर आ रहा है व्हाट व्हाट यू कैन सी आप उसमें कुछ वेरिएशन कर दें सो दैट वन थिंग गोज टू द बैकग्राउंड एंड अनदर थिंग इज फोरग्राउंड उसमें आप हेडिंग्स को फोरग्राउंड करते हैं यू चेंज द साइज ऑफ इट यू चेंज द फॉन्ट साइज ठीक है यू मेक इट बोल्ड समटाइम्स दीज आर इटेलिसाइज बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट द हेडिंग्स टू बी फोरग्राउंड आप चाहते हैं कि बेशक वो एग्जामिनर या जो टीचर हैं वो बाकी सारा डिटेल में तो तब जाए उसको हेडिंग से ही पता चले कि दीज आर द वेरियस डिमार्केशन एंड डिविजन ऑफ माई असाइनमेंट एंड आई हैव पेड अटेंशन टू ईच एंड एवरी हेडिंग इन दिस राइटिंग दैट इज ग्रेफोलॉजिकल फोर ग्राउंडिंग द रेस्ट ऑफ इट द रेस्ट ऑफ द टेक्सट मेक्स अ बैकग्राउंड एंड योर हेडिंग्स आर फोर ग्राउंडेड बिकॉज यू हैव मेड प्रोमिनेंट देयर साइज their bold form and their italicized italicized form to aapne usko foreground kar diya aapne unko namaya kar diya iska matlab hai namaya karna aur jo jis tarike se aapne reel kiya they have been foregrounded aisa hai are you getting it uh, there are so many examples so many examples aisa hota hai isme zehen mein do baatein rakhe ke when a writer is writing he has only language through which he can foreground things ab wo beech mein kahin pe italicize karke ya color ko aur de ke striking different color so he has nothing at his disposal he has only language so when he wants to make prominent a character suppose he has introduced 10 characters in a novel but there is one character that he wants to foreground so the introduction of it will be the introduction the arrival the first interaction of that character could be given in a language which is different from the kind of language 
the kind of prosaic or the kind of ordinary language that he has used for other characters or he can introduce him in a metaphorical way in a symbolic way in um in a, in a in a poetic way even in a prose work so the language ko he is going to foreground the language that language through which he introduces the character a certain character which he wants to foreground or a certain idea or a certain experience or a certain event or a certain ending jahan pe bhi wo highlight karna chahta hai ya chahta hai ki reader is ki tawajjuh is pe ho because this is going to connect the whole this is going to be the uh, the pivot of the whole composition wahan pe first through the use of language language will be strikingly different metaphorical language in a prosaic language prosaic language i gave the i, I give the example of ts eliot you must have read his the wasteland and there is a oh, puri itni like very dense poem very on on disillusionment with civilization and all every thing is kind of in a very poetic way with a lot of historical and literary, literary illusions so such a scholarly such a grand and scholarly work and poetic work and all but within that poem there are a few parts ke jahan pe wo dialogue jo use hue hain they are like kind of bar language or salon language in very prosaic way the kind of language that we use in every day or the kind of language which was used in the 20th century at that point of time in everyday life so that part is foregrounded pura ek heavy sa scholarly sa poetic rhyming and this and that and full of illusions and all of a sudden a very matter of fact a very uh, prosaic kind of a language everyday language of the modern period of time so it draws attention to okay the writer is drawing attention to this and this is the reality this is the real face this is not the world which he is creating which he is being sensitive to which he is describing or portraying this is the actual face of the world this is how things are said and this is how things happen so uske uh, paas language hai language ko wo achanak se in the whole poem there will be a description of emotions and at one point like for example you take the example of john dens poetry Bo the the poem I don't remember the title of a, a valediction for bidding morning or something. Ah, usme jo compass ka do you remember it? Jo compass ka image hai. Usme wo shuru karta hai. It's a kind of a, it, it is a romantic poem based on the theme of love, and he's saying that uh, there is a lover and there is a beloved, and one of them is going to stay back home. while the other is going to travel across the world they are going far they are going to to be apart and uh, they are going to be at a great distance and both of them are sad because of this but at the end of the poem he says ke no we as lovers are like the two legs of a compass compass us zamane mein kisne shayari mein aur wo bhi mohabbat ki shayari mein compass ka word ya scientific gadgets ka so in itself this uh, a uh, bringing the yoking or the collusion of the science and love or everyday experience and scientific gadget this was very refreshing in itself lekin jo uski analogy hai ki lovers are the two legs of a compass even if they like one of them goes in one direction and the other one goes in another direction they are joined in their roots so they are never going to be separated अब इन द होल ऑफ द पोइम मैं फोर राउंडिंग की बात कर रही हूँ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट के द होल डिस्क्रिप्शन इज लाइक ऑफ रोमांस ऑफ लव ऑफ ऑफ द लवर एंड द बिलवेड पार्टिंग एंड दे बीइंग सैड बिकॉज ऑफ इट एंड एट द एंड ऑफ इट नो देयर इज नो मॉर्निंग बिकॉज दे आर लेग्स ऑफ अ कैंपस एंड देयर इज इन अ सिमिली और इन अ मेटाफोरिकल वे दिस इज सेड अब आपको पूरी पोइम याद ना भी रहे यू माइट नॉट रिमेंबर द वेरियस लाइन्स ऑफ इट or even the description of the feelings of the lover and the beloved but the compass image the metaphorical way of saying it ke the lovers are the two legs of a compass that stays in your head and that idea kyunki wo central idea hai ek hi image se the whole relationship the whole love affair the whole mourning um, sadness element everything is brought to you through that one image one metaphor and that is that of a compass so it says that is foregrounded 
because it it is the pivot of the whole point. It occupies the most prominent idea, the most prominent um, uh, collusion of two ideas, of two experiences <coughs> in that one. So ye aapke liye ek foregrounding ki bahut sari techniques hain. Um, uh, the kind of language jo literary device use hota hai, or a different kind of a rhythm for. Mm, I, I keep on giving the example ke aap gana sunte hai. Main aapko gaane ki misal, which is poetry. Thik hai, uske lyrics bhi likhe jate hai. And many great poets have been like the Indian uh, poet Gulzar. He, he is a renowned poet and he has been writing lyrics as well. When you listen to the song, there is a refrain in it. Refrain means that there are two lines that are going to be in the same way. Is it like that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. In the whole song, there is another song, there is another song, there is another song, but in the two lines that are in the beginning, there is also in the beginning, there is also in the end of the song, and in the end of the song, that is called the refrain. A few lines which are repeated. अब वो that is the basic idea of the whatever various ideas are presented. वो refrain जो है that is the stylistic device जो foreground कर रहा है the most important theme or the main subject or the main idea of the the central idea the main idea of the of the lyric. ठीक है वो उसको foreground करता है कि this is what it is about. So there could be many various ideas to make one idea, one thing prominent, and that lies in the language. Here it lies, uh, it lies in refrain, it lies in the repetition of language. Okay? वो repeat किया जाता है और इसमें भी ये बताया गया है कि the view of style as foregrounding appears to be a compromise between the two views discussed above. Foregrounding या तो आप repetition से करें, लेकिन there are so many ways of doing it. ये कोई एक बात नहीं uh, but generally, stylisticians agree on this thing that through repetition and through deviation, these are the two major techniques of foregrounding. One, you use a totally different language for one idea and it will be foregrounded. Or you repeat on the idea and it will become foregrounded. According to this yeah. view, style... Let me finish this paragraph and then if you have anything, we'll discuss it. Okay? According to this view, style consists of choices of both the deviant features and those linguistic phenomena which are not deviant but nevertheless striking. For ground, you can do it, 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 you and there could be a literary device used, but if there is right now, we are talking about repetition. So, now, for emphasis, for the foreground, for emphasis, for the structure, for the idea, for the terminology, for repeat. करें. This view emphasizes two major types of choices. That is, choices that are deviant and those that, that are overable. For they both pr produce foregrounding. Deviation produces foregrounding by breaking the rules or norms of everyday language. You use a different kind of a language. ठीक है? And this will be a style. जैसे मैंने आपको example दी elephantum design. So a different kind of a you break away, you break from the convention, from the rules of everyday language. And this deviation, you you bring desire, the uh, the quality of the desire to the center. So in the whole of the poem, that is foregrounded. लेकिन over regularity से Regularity का मतलब अभी हमने refrain में repetition की बात की एक ही line दोहराई जाती है चार पांच दफा it is repeated so many times so the regularity of it the uniformity of it produces emphasis and through emphasis through stressing on it by being emphatic through repetition on it it foregrounds the idea by means of uniformity of choice within the language एक ही rhythm को repeat करें या एक ही rhyme को repeat करें या parallel में दें Parallel की सबसे बड़ी अच्छी मिसाल जो मॉडर्न लूथर किंग की वो स्पीच है। I have a dream that one day America will be this. I have a dream that a white man will be sitting with a black man. I have a dream. So it has the repetition of this I have a dream structure. तो अब वो अपना विजन बता रहे थे। Emphasis is on he is emphasizing on his vision. At the same time he is saying that it's not a reality. It is a dream. 
बट इट इज हिज विजन दैट वन डे अमेरिका विल बी लाइक दिस एंड इन इट इसमें कोई डेविएशन नहीं है जब वो दस दफा कहता है कि आई हैव अ ड्रीम सो थ्रू पैरल वो एक स्ट्रक्चर और जो वी डिस्कस द एग्जाम्पल वी डिस्कस द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ डिकन्स के डिकन्स जो है वो कहता है कि इट इज द एज ऑफ रीजन इट इज द एज ऑफ फुलिशनेस अब देख लें पैरल का मतलब है साइड बाय साइड प्लेस साइड बाय साइड इट इज द एज ऑफ इट इज द एज ऑफ इट इज द एर ऑफ इट इज द एर ऑफ लेकिन ही ब्रिंग्स अनदर वेरिएशन इन इट कि कंट्रास्टिंग आइडिया फुलिशनेस एंड रीजन होप एंड डिस्पेयर तो एक को वो रिपीट कर रहा है और एक को कंट्रास्ट कर रहा है एंड दैट इज वाई इट बिकम सच अ स्ट्राइकिंग थिंग ठीक है सो ओवर कभी कभी आप फॉर द सेक ऑफ एम्बसिस यू कैन रिपीट यू कैन प्ले साइड बाय साइड प्ले साइड बाय साइड का मतलब है कि सर्टन सिंटेक्टिकल ऑर्डर इज रिपीटेड और सर्टन लेक्सिकल आइटम इज रिपीटेड देर इज ओवर रेगुलरिटी एंड थ्रू रेपिटेशन थ्रू यूनिफॉर्मिटी एम्फेसिस इज क्रिएटेड एंड थ्रू द एम्फेसिस द आइडिया इज फॉर ग्राउंडेड और कभी बिल्कुल टोटली ऑल टूगेदर डिफरेंट लैंग्वेज फ्रॉम द काइंड ऑफ लैंग्वेज विच हैज बिन यूज इज यूज एंड एन आइडिया इज फॉर ग्राउंडेड इन ऑर्डर टू ड्रॉ रीडर्स अटेंशन डेविएशन कैन अकर एट ऑल लेवल्स ऑफ लैंग्वेज फोनोलॉजिकल डेविएशन हो सकती है डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ साउंड आप यूज कर सकते हैं ग्रेफोलॉजिकल की मैंने आपको मिसाल दी कि ग्रेफोलॉजी में यू विल डिस्कस के पॉइंट्स कैन बी रिटर्न नॉट इन द नॉर्मल ऑर्डर इन द ऑर्डर ऑफ द आइडियाज दैट यू यू कैन क्रिएट एन इमेज ऑफ एन आइडिया एंड यू कैन राइट द पोएम इन दैट वे वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल्स इन इन दिस वॉज दैट कि वो लोनलीनेस पे हैं अलीफ इज फॉलोइंग एंड द पोएम इज ऑन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ लोनलीनेस सो ऐसे लिखा गया है एज इफ लीफ इज फॉलोइंग एंड इट इज फॉलोइंग अलोन ग्रेफोलॉजिकल जो स्ट्रक्चर हैं जो ग्राफिक स्ट्रक्चर हैं वो भी इस तरह से हैं इट इज रिटर्न इन मस्ट लेक्सिकल डेविएशन भी हो सकती हैं सिंटेक्टिक डेविएशन हो सकती है अरेंजिंग प्लेइंग विद अरेंजमेंट ऑफ वर्ड सीमेंटिक को लाइक वी डिस्कस्ड के पेन इज अ सोड ठीक है आप एक मानी को एक कॉन्टेक्सट को दूसरे कॉन्टेक्स के साथ एक ऑब्जेक्ट को दूसरे के साथ एसोसिएट करके फाइंडिंग एसोसिएशन एंड गिविंग डिफरेंट मीनिंग्स टू द सेम टू द सेम ऑब्जेक्ट्स टू द सेम आइडियाज टेक्सुअल डेविएशन भी हो सकती है टेक्स्ट के फॉर्म में जॉनर के फॉर्म में भी हो सकती हैं वेयर एज ओवर रेगुलरिटी यूनिफॉर्मिटी आप फोनोलॉजी में साउंड्स में और सेंटेक्टिकल लेवल में ऑब्जर्व कर सकते हैं वाइल यू कैन एक्सरसाइज डेविएशन एट द ग्रेफोलॉजिकल लेक्सिकल एंड ऑल दीज एलिमेंट्स 